Hi, it's Anna Haferman. Today I want to go into the uh, faster fair isle technique a little bit more and talk about how to get a nice edge uh, row, a seaming row that where the floats go all the way to the end on each side. And it's really easy to do. I'm building on the technique I showed you in the last video, which was called Faster Fair Isle. And if you haven't seen that one yet, you may want to watch that one first. I'll put a link in the description. So I'm using the needle beetle to select my needles. And the needle beetle selects based on the first eight stitches, uh, whichever stitch I pull to position, whatever needles I pull to position C, it repeats across the bed. But one thing it will also do is it will skip uh, the first needle if it's left in position B. So what that means is I can um, mark my selection needles, uh, leave the first one out, but mark the next eight, like I did in the first video, uh, so that when I'm selecting, you. I will select on those eight, and I'm just marking my bed with a washable Crayola marker, which will come off easily when I'm done. So notice I did not uh, number this first needle. So that one's always gonna stay in position B. The other thing the needle beetle will do is if I uh, pull a needle to position D, it will just kind of ignore it. It will uh, not include it in the pattern. So with that in mind, when I'm doing my fair isle and I've drawn out my little cheat sheet like I showed in the last video, um, this column here, the numbers here correspond to the numbers here. So these are the needles I'm pulling. Uh, this corresponds to the row counter and then the colors correspond to the colors that I'm knitting with. So that's our cheat sheet. And so what I do is I put, uh, for my first row, I'm, I have my, I already have some yarn cast on. So for my first row, I select the needles I want and in the contrast color, because I have gray in my feeder, which you can't see, it's off camera, but I do. What I do is take my beetle and going by my chart, I select that number four stitch, which is right there. And then I've got my last needle out to position D. And then I just use the beetle and go across and it selects in pattern, but it also keeps this last one in work. So what that, then I set my carriage on hold on the left and slip or part on the right. Um, this means both of the levers uh, on the, let's show you that, both of these levers are going backwards, both of these are going forward. And that's going to be the same on um, both the both the uh, LK150 and the KX350. And now that I've got my pattern selected, I'm ready to knit my first row. Now you notice that this first needle knit and this last needle floated. Uh, when I'm on the left, I change color. Actually, I do it, park my yarn over there, and I put my red yarn in. And now when I'm on the left, all I need to do is knit back. And now because I'm in part or slip on this side, what's gonna happen is the needles out here will knit, the needles back here will float, which is the opposite of what they did the last time. So I knit a row. And then you see the pattern, uh, the carriage knit here and slipped this needle, which is how I got, uh, this is gonna happen every time. And that's how I get this uh, edge stitch. So for my next uh, row, I look at my chart and I have a two in my row counter. I go to my row counter 
row. This time, because I have the red in the carriage, I pick out the gray needles on that, uh, the gray needles, which is one, two, six, seven, and eight. One, two, six, seven, and eight. And notice this needle here just gets, uh, just stays there. Then I pull out, after I select that, pull out this last needle to position D. Then I take the beetle and select. And that needle stayed in B, that one stayed in D. And then I knit across. And see how it knit a red stitch there and slipped over here. So now, uh, when I'm on the left, I always change color and I'm just parking my yarn on this side, changing to the gray yarn. And knitting back and then um, I just keep going so here I'm on four I have gray in the feeder so I choose the reds which are three four and five three four and five I always select this last needle to position D or hold position and then I use my beetle and select. And uh, again, the same thing will happen. This time, these will knit, these will float, as it does every time. So I knit across, and I change yarn when I'm on the left. And knit back. And so I, you can probably see it happening. Maybe I'm going from red to gray to red and gray to red to gray. So um, this time I, um, I am on six. I have red, so I choose these grays. So I have one, seven, and eight. And there's one seven and eight and I'm careful that I this one I is not even in the equation of selecting so I always pull this last needle to position D and uh, use the beetle and then knit and that's all it is So I'm on my last row. I've done two uh, repeats of the pattern, so I've marked each time. This is my third repeat, and this is going to be my last time, uh, my last row. I've got the red in the carriage, so I'm going to pull out these gray needles. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Always pulling out that end needle, and then using the needle beetle to go across. And this is going to be my last one. And now um, I still need to change to the gray. Uh, what I'm going to do though is cut this red yarn because I'm going to have this big float. So, and that doesn't always happen. It just, in this pattern, it does. So I'm going to cut it. So I'm going to put that red yarn, uh, the tail of that in the hook here so that it, when it comes back, it'll uh, pull it through. That way that will go to the end when I'm, uh, when I finish. And you could always weave that in at the end if you want. Um, so there's my third, uh, repeat. So now I'm going to switch the carriage and just knit some rows and then we'll take it off and see what it looks like. So I've cut the yarn. I'm just going to knit off and let we'll see what it looks like. So here it is. That's our fair isle. This bottom was just our cast on, so we can pull that and show it a little better. Um, 
here's our edge stitch and see how it goes from red to gray to red to gray and the floats go all the way to the end and it does that on both sides so then if you were to seam up say a hat or something you would this would disappear in the side so that's our fair isle and if you like this video please like and subscribe and if you have any questions let me know in the comments thank you so much